Welcome to the Vortex Nation podcast, brought to you by lovers of hunting, shooting, public lands, the Second Amendment, and good food. All right, what's going on, everybody? We're coming to you with one more from the NRA Show 2018. We got Jimmy here, but uh, most importantly, I'm joined by Anthony Amantine. And uh, for those of you who maybe aren't familiar with him, you should go on Instagram, check him out right now. It is at a dot amantine a m a n t i n e and uh man this dude can hunt some hogs and i don't want to take too much away from him before he introduces himself but uh anyway yeah anthony why don't we tell our our listeners a little bit about yourself well i'm anthony amantine and uh i'm a texas hog hunter uh, i do varmint hunting occasionally uh, i live in north texas about 45 minutes north of dallas and uh, all I care about is is hunting. <laughs> Pretty much that's it. That's for sure. If you follow his Instagram account, that is very evident for sure. So, uh, Anthony, I mean, obviously obviously a big thing that you do is hog hunting. And you mentioned environment hunting, too. Yes, yeah. And I'm sure for most of the people, if, if people are listening here from Texas, I mean, I mean, you know hog hunting like the back of your hand because those hogs are everywhere. But for a lot of folks who maybe aren't as familiar with hog hunting, I think a lot of people... Maybe they see it or they hear about it, and they kind of wonder what the big deal is. You know, right. I, I think maybe they wonder if it's just, do you do it for the thrill? Is it just kind of like senseless killing of hogs, or, no. or you know, what's going on there? There's a, there's, a lot, there's a lot more behind it that people don't see. Uh, you know, when we post the pictures and the videos, people think, hey, man, these guys are just out there slaughtering these animals for nothing, and that's not necessarily true. Are we having fun? Of course we're having fun. Uh, but we are making a huge difference uh, in, in this state. So uh, a few weeks back, I got invited out to a ranch, and this was a perfect example of how bad the situation is. And this landowner is uh, overrun with pigs. He's has, he has over 15 head of, uh, of cattle on his property, and he is losing ground to these pigs as far as being able to grow uh, you know, hay off his pastures to feed these animals. He's losing ground. You can't plow these work, uh, pastures. You can't work it. You can't bail it. It's just complete destruction of the property so we go up there and uh we've been hunting this place for some time now and we average 30 to 40 pigs a night and that's making a huge difference on his property so the landowner really does have a problem the whole state of texas does the cities the small towns you name it it's just the, se- the severe the damage man is kind of where we kind of attack for sure and a lot of your photos are at night so yes. are you are you hunting primarily at night then about 90% of my hunting is at nighttime. Uh, the animals, they, there are a lot of ranches, a lot of properties. You see them during the daytime. Uh, but we have these places pressured pretty hard, so they're, they, they will go nocturnal on you. And uh, if you do have daytime activity, it's very slim. But we have a higher success rate at nighttime with night equipment. When you get into, uh, when you get into hog hunting, What's necessary to just kind of like get into it? Do you just kind of go out anywhere and just look around for them, or, no. or do you have to do you have to kind of study where they're at and it, figure it's, out? It's not really study. It's just being able to get a hold of the property. You can have here in Texas. You know, we, we have to say a rough number: ninety three, ninety five percent of the state is privately owned. And once you find access to a property that's that has pigs, it's a no brainer. You're going to run into them. You're not going to have a problem finding them. Could you hunt them during the day? You don't, getting into hog hunting, I think, is cheaper than any other type of hunting. Hmm. All you need is a rifle, you know, and. Are you, you usually just using like an AR platform, yeah, right? Yeah, you could. Two, two, you could use an AR. You can, I started out with a bolt gun, you oh, know, okay. and uh, you can use shotgun as well, depending on the range. But uh, I got into it with a bolt gun. I, I think I was in the hole, total with optics and everything, $600. And I went out during the day and I was killing a lot of pigs during the day. Uh, until the pigs started to figure out that, hey, we need to start coming out a little bit later. And then that's what I was forced to use, night optics. But hog hunting is extremely easy. The hard part is gaining that property. That's in Texas. That's in Texas. But uh, learning, it's just like anything else. It's trial and error. You know, it's trial and error. And once you figure that out, you'll learn real quick the do's and don'ts. And then your success rate, you know, it will be, it'll go up. It will be pretty high. For sure. For sure. So, you know, Obviously, you've been doing a lot of hog hunting for a long time. Now, one thing, and I previously mentioned it, is that you're on Instagram. 
Yeah. And you have, I don't, I forgot to check it before we got on here, I, but you have quite a few followers and a lot of people who are very interested in what you're doing. Yeah. And I know that you didn't just get into it for the Instagram fame, no, um, no, but I, you've been in it for a while. So what, how did that whole thing kind of transpire, though, it, just all these people? It is crazy. I did, really didn't expect this because there's a lot of other pages out there that people hog hunt. But I got into it uh, through a friend of mine, Cable Smith, with the Lone Star Outdoor Show. But I was sending him pictures all the time. He was like, dude, these are some great pictures. you got to share this on Instagram. And I kept blowing him off. And about a year later, finally, he pushed me onto it. And I got on Instagram. And immediately, people were intrigued with the animals that I was taking, the way I was doing it, and the photos. People were loving it. And it, it just worked out for me. You know, I'm not saying I'm the big guy, but I, I definitely have a lot of support from the people on Instagram. And uh, it's, it's definitely not going unnoticed. It's, it's welcoming. Yeah, you were even on. I think you said once before that you were even on the forums prior. Yes, to prior prior to that, I was. I was on a local forum here in Texas, and uh, you know, uh, things changed. Uh, different group of people came in. Things got political over there, and it was always arguing and nothing about hunting. And I felt like it wasn't a place for me anymore, so I got off of that. And social media, guess what? It's strictly gear and hunting, strictly gear and hunting, and that's what I converse about. And that's what I like talking about. Right, so. right. And you Instead get of politics. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. You get followers from all over the states, probably even some internationally oh, too. And yeah. Just oh, yeah. just totally enthralled with what you've got going on there. And uh, and one of the cool things that I think too that I've seen you do is, you know, a lot of these people who get kind of big names on Instagram, they kinda have their Instagram life where they're real friendly with everybody, but in real life they kind of are like uh, they're not mean necessarily, but they just don't interact with all their followers yeah, in real interact. life that much. Yeah. I've seen you even sometimes go out to the range where people can go shoot your guns oh, like yeah. you show them all the oh, time yeah. and show pictures yeah, yeah. up. So what, talk a little bit more about that. I think that's pretty cool. So when I first got into Instagram and even what you see on YouTube, and I'm not making fun of anybody. I'm not pointing any fingers at anybody, but a lot of people are not engaging with with their following, with their, with their fans, you know? And I said, you know what, I'm going to get into this, and I'm not going to be that guy. You know, I don't want to snub people, you know. I'm, I'm average. I'm just like everybody else. I'm a blue-collar worker. I work hard. I work hard to pay for my stuff, and I bleed red just like you. I'm nobody mm -hmm. different. I just hog hunt a little bit more than the average person. But, <laughs> That's for you sure. You know, I'm, I'm just a regular person, and I want people to understand that, you know. And so if you run into me in public and be like, hey, you know, Amatine, I want to go hunt with you or shoot with you, I'm going to do everything I can to try to make that happen. You know, because I love to just share that experience with people. What's the point of showing off a picture of something or a video and not interacting with the people that like that? You know what I'm saying? So right. I, it's a, it's a, I got a lot of support, and I just want people to know that that's not going unnoticed. You know, so I'm going to do everything I can to interact with everybody. You know, there's, there's a lot of people out there that don't do that. You know, people ask a question, and they don't ever reply back to it. Mm -hmm. that's, not, that's not the way you do things. If you're putting your life out there, you got to be able to – Oh, totally. To, to be able to interact with people. Totally. And I think you go live on Instagram more than anybody I've seen, <laughs> and it is awesome. Sometimes yeah. you're at your house, sometimes you're in your shop or at yeah. NRA. Yeah. And, yeah. like, yeah, I mean, for real, Anthony answers pretty much every question that I comes try. in, which is awesome. I try. So, again, again, another plug for you should definitely follow Anthony. Now, you mentioned kind of, like, you, you do have that attitude of, like, hey, man, like, if you want to do something, let's go do it. Yeah. What has that? What has that gotten you into? I, you've you've hunted hogs in probably every way possible. What yes. kind of what's what kind of have you done? You know. Well, so like things that have been new to me, like introduced to me. Yeah. I, long range shooting. Yeah. Right now, it that has just got my head going in circles. Like I just want to learn more about it. Now I'm wanting to do long range shooting on big game. Mm -hmm. I actually want to go do a real hunt. I want to. I want to backpack. I want to carry a big rifle or a bow and hike up a mountain and, and actually hunt something different. And there's people that are throwing that at me, and I'm a little intimidated right now, but <laughs> eventually it will. It, I think it will come together and I can do it, you know. But I'm super excited about what's to come because you can only pig hunt and varmint hunt for so long, you know. you got to kind of open the, open the doors to new things. Right, you know? right. As for, as for pig hunting, you have gotten uh, – I've seen you've hunted from – 
vehicles, right? Yep. Or, and you've hunted on the ground. On the ground. And yes. in the air. And in the air. And the first time I went up was with you. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was, was really, cool. Yeah, it was really cool. That really was cool. cool. Yeah, we didn't get, I, every time I've seen people go up in the air, they're always just like, it's like hog mania. We and got they're, skunk. We got skunk. You we got, got one. Yeah. I think, oh, wait, I you got, got one, too. One. Yeah, yeah, that was we exciting. We both got one. Yeah. But yeah. we didn't see the 20 to 30 in a group like everybody else has seen. Right. You know? And then, of course, then, too, another guy came, like, the next day. Because yep. this was all at Last Shadow. Yeah, yeah. No, the guy came the next day. He got like forty. Yeah, they slaughtered him. Yeah, it was unreal. Kind of crazy unreal. how that. That works. was frustrating. <laughs> so, yeah, they're unpredictable. But it yes, is yes. when you're in a bird, undoubtedly, and uh, I guess you know maybe it's just kind of like common sights for you guys down here in Texas. But again, coming down from Wisconsin, looking at the ground, you could see what the hogs do. Oh, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. It's patchy. They're just. The ground looks just, just totally it trampled. It looks like people were throwing grenades from a helicopter. It does. That's exactly what it looks That's, like. Yeah, that is exactly what yes. it looks like. And it's and it's everywhere. It's everywhere. You know, buddy, you know, you think about that. You go driving across that pasture with your equipment, let's just say in a tractor, that's a hundred and we'll say hundred and forty thousand dollar piece of equipment and you're just destroying it, you know, because of these these pastures are so rooted up. Mm -hmm. uh, you got animals running out there, you got your kids riding the horses on pastures like that and hit a hog waller, you got a problem. You know, sure. so it really is a, a big problem. Uh, they're very invasive. They're destructive. Certain species of plants are disappearing. Uh, large populations of deer are being pushed out of certain ranches. So it, it is a problem. Yeah. And it's and it's spreading even outside of Texas. I yes. mean, I, I think Texas wasn't necessarily like the epicenter no. where all of it originated from, but but it's the, been the, a big one. It, I, I've the heard, state's larger. The it, state's larger. Right. Yeah. I've heard Florida, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. just a lot of the southern states, but it, yep. and then it, it continues to spread. Yeah. You know, we were just talking to a couple guys from Oklahoma today. We were mentioning how South Oklahoma is oh, starting to I, get a lot of hogs. I've, I've seen more pigs in Oklahoma on properties than I have in Texas. Yeah. Uh, Oklahoma has a serious problem. And uh, I can tell you right now, uh, Kansas is one that really concerns me. Hmm. I, I, I do care about crops and stuff like that. I lived in Kansas for two years. And I know what those people rely on, and that's their that's their crops. There's, there's the real farmers are right there. For sure. And when you get pigs up there, I mean, come on, you know, you got all kinds of good resources growing out there. Mm -hmm. And as soon as they get a taste of that, it's going to be over. People don't realize how quick these animals multiply. It's unreal. It's they're like cockroaches. They're like cockroaches. You know, it is unreal. You know, within three months, that sow can have a litter of anywhere from six all the way up to a dozen at three months. And then, you know, imagine what her offspring is about to do in three months. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just, Jeez. it is unreal. It is unreal. Now, here's, here's one question, too, that I found interesting. And I've heard, I've heard kind of a, a mixed bag from some different hog hunters. But I remember we asked you this question a while back. We just didn't get it in, uh, on podcast. But, you know, when you ask somebody, hogs are clearly a problem. But would you ever completely do away with them? No. Right. There's no way. Right. And it, There's and, no way. And that's because there's a lot of things that get in the way of that. Uh, you know, there's there's a lot of laws to where we can't hunt core properties. You know, they're they're almost protected by that. Also, a lot of the landowners are not wanting people on their property shooting them. You know, mm -hmm. or they're wanting a pretty penny for it. It is that's a tough one. That yeah. really is a tough one because there's a lot of things that are in the way. You mm -hmm. just can't go out there and poison them because you got other animals that are going to be affected by that right. eventually. Right. You know. That's not good, you mm -hmm. know. So it's we're talking millions, man, just in Texas, millions. Mm -hmm. We're not even talking about, you know, Louisiana, Alabama, Mississippi, Florida, Georgia, Arkansas. You know, yeah, they've yeah, got yeah. their problems too. So For it's sure. like let, let's say we completely wipe them out in Texas. Well, guess what? There's yeah. still a problem in the South, you know. Yeah. So there's no way. There's even no so, way. as a problem, would you ever, like, wish them gone? Or would no. it be because you enjoy hunting them? I enjoy it so much. And <laughs> uh, pig hunting – to me, is a little bit more of a challenge. Uh, you know, yeah, you can have a feeder up and they'll come right in there, but that's not the way it goes where I hunt at. You know, I can have a feeder up, and they'll be two, 300 yards away from it in the pasture just rooting. They can care less about the corn. But mm. they're just challenging. They're smart. They're fast. They can get big. I mean, and the hunting is never the same. Mm -hmm. It's always something different, always something different. It, it definitely, uh, I don't, I don't want to see it gone. Yeah, I think it should be managed, but not completely gone. Right. That's the same way I feel about coyotes and any other animals. It should be managed at a certain point, you know, mm -hmm. but not completely wiped out. You ever have any close encounters with hogs oh, coming yeah. at you? And oh yeah, a yeah, yeah, yeah. I had them graze my leg. I, 
I've had to kick piglets out of the way, and uh, <laughs> I've had some stop right in front of me with a bullet in their head. It's just uh, I've never been injured, but, yes, I've had my close encounters. It yeah. comes with the game. Yeah. yeah. you got to be willing to, you gotta be willing to uh, be ready for that. You know, that's going to happen. Right, right. Well, hey, so that's, that's kind of hog hunting. And, again, you got to follow Anthony to get a lot, just kind of really see what we're talking about a lot if you're not overly familiar with hog hunting. But obviously we're in Texas. We're talking about Texas hog hunting. Anthony here is from Texas. Another big thing that's happening in Texas right now is this NRA show. The NRA. And, uh, you know, I, I think I haven't seen you get super overly into it on your page. Oh, no. No, uh, you when won't you did, see that. Yeah, when you, posted, uh, when you posted about, though, being here, you, yes. know, you mentioned just the fact that, and obviously it's, it's, not, it's not in our nature to kind of sit by and let any of our Second Amendment rights get taken away. But, right. but seeing, seeing the NRA show, you've gotten to walk around now for about a day and a half. Kind of what do you think about the show? What kind of feeling have I'm, you gotten? I'm still in awe. It's, I haven't had this feeling since I was in high school winning a state championship. Mm-hmm. You know, like it's overwhelming. I told people for a long time, I'm not going to do SHOT Show. I'm not doing any of these shows. I don't want anything to do with it. I just want to do me and go hunting, you know. And it's obvious the last few months things have been real tense politically and with firearms, okay? Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, they keep targeting a certain firearm, a semi-automatic AR-15 platform. But uh, we use those rifles (laughs) religiously. We don't have them because they're cool. We have them because it's our tool. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so you're sitting here and you're watching this on the news, and it's just like every week it's something new, and it's an and I'm starting to slowly realize that, hey, this is an attack on my Second Amendment right, being able to own something like this, you know, and keeping us limited with what we can use. You know, I don't like that. Right. And uh, anyways, NRA is coming up, and I said, I don't know if I can do this, you know. And then I'm sitting there, and I'm like, look, if I'm sitting at the house just watching this, I'm not doing myself any good. You know, why not just show up, show my face? Everybody that came through that door is making a difference. Not just me, not all the other big people on Instagram or big companies like Vortex and, you know, whoever. Uh, No, the people coming through that door is what's making a difference. Show your presence, show your face, and let people know that you're backing up this this 2A, the Second Amendment, you know. And Bush having his speech, and and it's obvious he's not going to do anything to, to take that away from us, you know. So it's pretty cool seeing it here in Texas. It's obvious Texas is... It's 2A all the way, and this is a yeah, big, big turnout. You get that sense around here for yep. sure. And, uh, you know, obviously you've gotten to see a lot of people. I don't think anybody here has been overly rowdy or anything like no, that. No, <laughs> it has been welcoming, and it's yeah, unreal. Yeah. And walking in, you don't hear anybody screaming and throwing stuff at you. Everybody here is happy. Mm-hmm. Uh, people got their families in here. The kids are running around eating lollipops. And, I mean, it's just it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a good feeling. That's good the only place. way I can explain it. It's a yeah. good feeling. Yeah, and those, and those of you listening, I know actually earlier when we talked to Cheyenne too, we said it, but we'll say it again. You know, come on out to yeah. a show like this. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Do Lots it. Of, a lot of times the uh, the shows where a ton of manufacturers like this show up to are only for like dealers and stuff, and this is one where consumers can go and yes. see a lot of cool stuff. Yes, so yes. It's not like SHOT Show. You know, here anybody can walk in here, walk around, handle all the scopes that you see up here, all the guns. Mm-hmm. And uh, even ammunition and just kind of get a feel of it, you know. And, and then most of the stuff is available right now. So it's a good place. It is. Yeah. It is. It's been a ton of fun. Yeah. But, uh, Anthony, again, we really appreciate you coming on. But, uh, and we know, you're, we know you've been busy. You've been, uh, you've been getting seen and, and called out by tons of people who yeah. all recognize your face yeah, from, it's uh, crazy, from Instagram. Man. Dude, it's crazy. I, I never thought they'd be like, hey, man, you, you know, we love your photos and your hunts. And it's like, wow, man. People are actually watching me, you know, like it's, it's just, it's, it's rewarding. Makes mm-hmm. me want to go out and go hunt right now, you know, oh, yeah. so it, it's, it's good stuff, man. It's good to see you getting support from everybody. Absolutely. Well, we appreciate you coming on here. And, and one thing that we do is we give everybody a last call. So you just kind of, the last call could be about anything. You can pick anything you want and uh, just kind of to finish out on, go for it. Last call. What, what could we talk about here? Like a question? Man, it could be anything. I anything? guess just whatever, as uh, Pedro Sanchez and Napoleon Dynamite once said, follow your heart. Follow your heart. <laughs> follow your heart. Or maybe that uh, was Napoleon. He said it to Pedro. <laughs> I can't remember. Yeah, it was Napoleon. My bad. <laughs> it's all but just good. follow your heart. Yeah, you know, um, 
let's talk about optics here real quick. All right, and, cool. And that's because I'm here with you guys, and I want to get something. I promised Anthony out. I wouldn't bring it up and bore him with optics talk. No, we're going to so talk. That's so cliche to talk. But all right, all right. No, we're going to You brought talk it up. So I we can, brought it up. All that's right. right. So, you know, number one question all, people always ask me is, what, what's the best optic for hog hunting? I'm going to let you guys know right now that's a very repetitive one, and I don't have a problem answering that question. Low power. If you want to pig hunt, I say stick with a low power opt, uh, optic. It can be a one to eight, a one to six, even in, and maybe as high as two and a half to a ten. But I preferably stick with low power optics, and that's because you don't want to have a high powered optic on a moving animal like a pig. Uh, you want to be able to have a good field of view, and you want a good reticle as well. You don't want a busy tactical reticle. You want something pretty simple. And uh, I'll tell you what, that TMC, that TMCQ uh, reticle on the old PST. Mm -hmm. And the new VMR2 here on the PST Gen 2. Those are great reticles for mm -hmm. pig hunting. And I use it at night as well. I clip thermals in front of the, my day optic, and I hunt with that same reticle. Yeah, I just wanted to get that put out there and let people know that I think low-power optics is the way to go as far as hog hunting. Good stuff, good stuff. And I th sometimes people, too, they look at the... They look at the low power and think, you know, eh, I don't know. They think it's a disadvantage. They think, yeah, they think because, you know, oh, well, it's only is it's only good to maybe 100, 200 oh, or something no. like that. But, you oh, know, you, no. You I, can, ring still, I ring still 550, 600 yards all day with a look, one to six. Yeah. You can do it. Yeah. It, it's just. And then, like you said, too, I'm sure, what, what kind of, I guess I'll ask you this question. What power, when you're hog hunting, do you find yourself on most of the time? <laughs> this will blow you away. One power. Just straight up. Straight up one. All right. I never crank those scopes up. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but when I'm at one power, I have that field of view, and that's all I'm worried about. I know what my bullet drop is if I got to hold over a little bit because we've got the good hash marks on the uh, on the reticle, but mm -hmm. I know exactly what I got to do with one power, and I'm pretty lethal with it, and that's where I'm at 90% of the time. Yeah. And when you're, when you're there, so what kind of distances have you – taking game out to on one power on one power uh the furthest i've been out on one power was probably a little over 300 yards okay and yeah. that was at night and that's that's kind of challenging sometimes at night depth perception and all that but right uh you know yeah 300 yards at night with a low power that's awesome yeah. again yeah just something i think a lot of people don't quite realize but that field of view is huge and a lot of times too you're probably you're not scanning necessarily for hogs through your rifle scope. No. You're scanning with your eyes, with binoculars yep. or something like that. Yep. Yep. When you see them with your eyes, you want to be able to bring a rifle scope up and immediately see it. Yep, put exactly. Put the rounds on target. E exactly. I don't want to be fighting uh, having that scope always cranked up to six power, or maybe eight. Shaking and, a bunch. And shaking a bunch and not being able to track animals. I always keep it down to one power. Yeah. If anything, I'll go up to two, but I'm always at one power, easy to track, and I'm good with that. My last question to bug you with, and I know this was like a last call thing, but... Do you run the illumination usually or no? No, I don't. Okay. I, I don't run illumination, especially during the day. At nighttime, I will occasionally, but it will be on the lowest setting, all the way down to one. Mm -hmm. But I rarely use the illumination on reticles. Very, very rarely. So you're still picking up that center reticle then oh, pretty yeah, easily. Oh, yeah, I'm picking it up just fine. Yeah, without the dot. Without right on. Without the dot, yep. Right on. Yep. Well, hey, that's an awesome last call. My last call will just be one last plug. Follow at a.amantine on Instagram. Hit him up. Join him in for uh, some of his live events because those are always great. <laughs> Man, this guy talks about anything related to hunting and all yeah. that stuff. Sometimes, too, if you follow his Instagram story, he'll do pranks on his neighbor. <laughs> and that's also really, really entertaining. Oh, that was hilarious. Well, would, you, would you, like, stole his lawnmower? Yeah, he, so he's, steal your boots you know, or something? He's, he's a Yankee, man. He's from uh, Long Island, <laughs> New York, so he has that real – Heavy Italian accent, you know, and uh, he loves his lawnmower, man. And uh, one day he left it out. And I'm, before I even get to that story real quick, he took my – I ride four-wheelers a lot, so, you know, I got these racing boots, and I had to wash them off, and I let them sun dry on my hood. Well, my boots ended up missing. Mm. This was a year prior to this. And he took my boots and uh, hit them from me and told me some kids walked by and took them. So I flipped out, and now I go running down the street looking for these kids. Come back, and they're dying laughing. <laughs> they had my boots hidden. So I was like, I'm going to get you back. So then a year goes by. His lawnmower is sitting outside. I put his lawnmower up, and then you, I know you remember the story. It was like story. in your garage, yeah. right? Yes, it was in my garage. I close it, and he immediately jumps in his truck and just burns out down the street looking for somebody with a lawnmower. And so he's driving all over the neighborhood, and I'm like, oh, man, I hope nobody's mowing their lawn or anything because this <laughs> dude's going to flip, you know. But uh, 
he uh, he came back. His wife was trying to call the police. So I calmed her down, and I'm outside, <laughs> and I tell her what's going on. And she says, you are so wrong, you know. And so he comes back, and he's got beads of sweat all over his face. And I said, hey, you know, David, calm down. And I said, you remember what happened, you know, with my boots? And he says, yeah. And I said, and you was hiding them? He's like, yeah. And I said, well, go look in your garage. And he goes looking around, and his lawnmower is in there, and he's yelling and cursing. <laughs> and he never played another prank on me again. And so. the best part about this is, it was all on your Instagram story. Yeah, it was all. I put it all on my Instagram story. <laughs> it was hilarious. It, it, oh, was, it was funny. That and uh, and another word of warning too for those of you who are big Chevy GMC fans, you're uh, <laughs> you're gonna get ridiculed a little bit when you follow Anthony. Because, Power strokes, baby. Yeah, yeah. Power Forward stroke. all the way. Forward all the way. But anyway, so but that's my last call. Anyway, again, Anthony, we appreciate you coming Anytime, on. And, brother, uh, I I enjoy doing this, man. And uh, thanks for having me out. Oh, always a pleasure. And for those. Those of you who are, are listening, again, if you have any other topics you want us to bring up, let us know because uh, we always want to talk about whatever you want to hear. So uh, anyway, thanks again, everybody, for listening, and uh, we'll see you next time. All right, that'll wrap it up for this episode of the Vortex Nation podcast. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Hit that subscribe button so you can always stay up to date on the latest happenings over here at the Vortex Nation podcast. Leave us a review or comment down below. We want to hear what you have to say about the show. Maybe what you like, maybe what you didn't like, so that way we can make these podcasts as good as they can be. You can also follow us on Instagram, at Vortex Nation Podcast. We'll be posting about each episode released, so that way you can go back, find these things, maybe grab a little nugget of information that you could take with you to the range, out in the field, or uh, maybe to the kitchen if we're talking about some good food. So, again, everybody, thanks, and happy hunting and shooting. We appreciate it. Have a good one.